So what's going on guys? Welcome back to Carrasco Ranch. My name is Robert, if this is your first time tuning in. So in today's video, we're gonna cover how much does it cost to build a home, in particular, and particularly um, the pre-construction phase of this, pretty much a site prep of the general location where the home is gonna sit. Um, a lot of these are gonna apply for people who are moving out to rural areas, buying raw land, um, and some will apply for some city stuff as well. Um, but particularly for my build, um, for what we have done, it's going to be consisted of mainly the country living. So it's going to be very applicable for people looking out to moving out to the country. Um, if you're looking to move a mobile home out there, this is also going to apply to you. If you're looking to do any type of Airbnbs, particularly what I have done, it's going to apply to you. Again, building a new home, it's going to apply to you. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So I'm also going to tell you guys how you can cut some of the costs that I'm going to mention. So stay till the end and I'll tell you how to cut some of the cost um, so it doesn't become so expensive. By the way, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on my blog, zenfulwarrior.com. I'll leave it down below. You can check out all the glamping sites and construction stuff that we have done in the links down below as well. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. This is going to be all of my cost. So this is going to vary based off of your geographical location. I'm in Texas um, and particularly South Texas, but it's also going to apply for how big is your property, how far into your property you plan on putting your home. Um, are you going to put it right next to the road? Or are you going to put it, you know, a half a mile into your property? Um, how big is your home going to be, which is going to play into effect of your septic tank and things like that, the plumbing system. Um, there's a lot of variables, but this is just going to give you an overview of more or less what you can look at uh, for what I have done. So starting off, the first thing that we um, kind of did out here was put out electricity. So just to get the pole service out here um, from the electric company, and I think we put three poles and a service pole was $10,500. That was $10,500. Um, I know a lot of people are going to ask this, can you finance this stuff? I couldn't because I even asked with the electric company, like, hey, can I finance this stuff? They're like, no, because say I didn't pay, how are they going to repossess uh, my poles? I guess they could come and take them out, but it's probably a lot more work for them to do that. So that's the reason they either take, you know, all cash or you go and get a loan for this stuff, but they themselves will not finance it. Um, the next thing is going to be, so if you live out in the country, you have, you need a way to get water. So for us, we had a water well, which I'll talk about the cost for the water well here shortly. But to supply um, uh, electricity to the water well to run it um, off electricity, costing $5,200. I already had taken another step and kind of looked forward. So I ended up putting a 200 amp box overkill, but I went ahead and thought ahead because I already knew I was going to be doing some more things out here. So we put a 200 amp box and that includes all the electricity to run the... the uh, electricity to the water well itself. So in that $5,200 cost, um, it's going to include the whole pole to come up on the service pole that you have installed. It's going to include connecting the wires from the service provider to your pole. Um, it's going to include digging the trench and running it to the well. Um, and a lot of just uh, pre-setup for the home construction is already included in that $5,200. Um, the next one is going to be the water well. The water well is going to be the most expensive part um, for most people. And that's going to be, for me, it cost me about thirteen dollars to $14,000. That was two, three years ago, something like that. If you do that same well that I did two or three years ago, it's now going to cost you at least $20,000. So things have gone up. And again, I'm making this video in 2023. If you're seeing this, you know, in years later, obviously the cost is probably going to be more than what it is in 2023. Um, but yeah, so the next thing is going to be your tank and your pump uh, for your water well. You're going to want to protect it as well. So we built like a little doghouse for this thing. All in, it was $2,800. We didn't do the 50 gallon pressure tank. We did a 3,000 gallon pressure, uh, 3,000 gallon tank with a pump. Um, it's just for us, we did that. So in case the water well breaks down, um, I have time to get someone out here to fix it and I will still have water supplied to the homes. Um, but pretty much that's how I thought about it. I have 3,000 gallons in reserve, so if something happens, I can still shower, drink water, and all that good stuff. So yeah, so that was $2,800. The next thing is you're gonna need a road into your property. 
because if not, you are going to have ruts and like I said, this is for country living mainly, but you're going to have ruts and just trenches all over your road if you don't put down a road base on, on your property. So for me, it cost me $9,000. That included three tenths of a mile of road, which is about 11, 12 feet wide and three tenths of a mile long and about, I would say three to six inches deep. So it's a good size road. Again, $9,000 for that. The next thing was a septic tank. So the septic tank is usually the last thing they install when building a home, but I went ahead and included it in the cost um, because usually you're getting bids on this stuff already. So for us, that was $7,000, $7,200. Um, I just wrote down $7,000, but $7,000, those prices have gone up as well since I put it in, in the ground. But yes, yeah, $7,000, and that's gonna depend on the size of the home. For us, it was basically for like a five, five, five bedroom, a five, five home. If you have a smaller home, it can be a little less. If you have a bigger home, it's gonna be more. So yeah, $7,000. Uh, the next thing is going to be running the electricity to your home. Now, this is going to vary a lot based off of the distance. And are you going to go above ground or are you going to go below ground? How are you going to get the electricity to point A to point B? That's going to play a big role into your cost. We decided to go underground because, one, it's easier. Two, we have a lot of trees out here. There's going to be a lot of maintenance just to keep the trees from growing on the line. So, for us, that was $20,000. And that was a lot of work. It was about 400 feet or so. Um, and we have a lot of stuff supplied off of those 400 feet for the homes. So yeah, $20,000 for that. And just, you know, other things to consider if you're buying property, you got to buy land, consider your land costs and things like that. But total for me was $74,500. This is before building anything. This is just to prep the site and get the site ready. So yeah, this is a lot of money guys, almost $75,000 before I even got any kind of structure up and going. All right guys, so now we're gonna get into how you can cut some of the cost on your pre-construction of your home. The first thing I can think of is how far are you gonna put the home to your service pole? So your service pole is where you're gonna drop the electricity in from the service provider. If you can shorten that distance, so we ran it for 400 feet, that's quite a ways. But if you can shorten it up to maybe 50 or 100 feet, you're gonna cut your cost dramatically because now you're using less conduit, you're using less um, a wire, and it's just overall a lot less work, less trenching, less manual labor. So it's obviously gonna cut down on the cost. You can cut it in half, probably even a quarter of what I paid. So definitely keep that in mind. It'll save you thousands of dollars if you put it closer to your home. Uh, service pole, closer to your home, save a lot of money. Um, the next thing is, so we went with a 200 amp box. We wanted to make sure we had more than enough supply for whatever we plan on doing out here. So you can go with a smaller, you know, 100 amp or maybe even a one, 150 amp box. Um, so that is something you can cut the cost on, depending on what you plan on the future, what you're planning right now. I like to think ahead of time and say, you know, maybe I want to put a barn out here and now I'm going to need, need electricity. I have the, the power supply there if I ever plan on putting a barn close to the home or things like that. That was my thought process when I did that. But if you're trying to go on a budget, you can cut down the cost by getting a smaller uh, box. Um, again, your electrician will tell you if you can or you can't do that. Um, the next thing is going to be your electricity pole service. So some of this is negotiable because you can reduce the distance um, that you come off of your main pole from the road. So for me, I didn't want to be right on the road either. I, I want a little bit more privacy. So I did come in quite a ways into the property. But if you want to cut some of that cost, you can put your service pole, you can only put maybe one pole and then your service pole, and it'll drastically cut down your cost by more than 50% um, if you just do that. So I pay 10.5 you can easily drop it down by 50% if you just put your poles closer to the road uh, because obviously it's less work. They're having to travel less, having to use less wire, less poles to come into your property. Um, that's drastically going to reduce the cost. Um, the next thing is going to be your water well. So what are you planning on doing with your water? I know people drill 500 feet, 1,000 feet. Um, again, depending on what you plan on doing with that water is going to be dependent on how much it costs. 
Uh, also your location, if you choose a location that has um, water fairly available closer to the surface, it's drastically going to reduce the cost of your water well drilling. Now if you choose an area like in Rock Springs, Texas or any type of hill country where there's a lot of rocky terrain, your cost is going to go up because it's harder to find water. Two, it's going to put more wear and tear on those bits that are drilling down into the ground so they're going to have to charge you more. So again, little ways so you can reduce the cost of uh, pre-construction. The next thing is going to be your pump and your tank. I chose a 3,000 gallon tank. You don't have to go that big. You can go with the 1,500. You can go with the regular 50. Again, just depends what you want to do. For me, it was $2,800. If I would have gone the other way, it probably was saved over a thousand, eighteen hundred dollars, something like that. So, the little ways you can save money if you don't want to do that. Um, the next thing is the road. I put caliche down. Um, I paid nine thousand dollars for that, but that's because I I have a long driveway. If you have a shorter driveway, obviously you're going to cut that cost. We did spread this out ourselves, so my cost would have been more if I hired somebody. So again, if you hire somebody, you can probably double that. So it'd probably be like eighteen thousand instead of nine thousand. But yeah, you can drastically cut down your cost if you do it yourself, like I did. And the distance. Um, septic tank, you really can't get away too much with doing a septic tank. Um, it's going to be based off of the size of your home. And the only way you can really get away with it is if you do it yourself, which I wasn't about to take on that project. Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. That's some quick tips and ways you can reduce the cost on building your home, putting up your mobile home, whatever you're building or trying to get set up, that's a quick way you can actually reduce the cost and maybe put that money towards the actual structure itself. Um, hope you found it useful, hope you found it beneficial. Um, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Check out my blog. Until next time guys, be careful, be good, take care and God bless. See you guys in the next one, bye bye.